Hello and welcome to Ula Tilly Readings. My name is Lenore and tonight I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Aries. If Aries is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. Okay, let's get started. Okay. Let's see, what do we have here tonight? Lots of busyness. <laughs> okay, well, I hope you all are doing well. As I'm recording this, it is, um, it's Monday night and it's Memorial Day here in the US. So it's kind of like, uh, the second Sunday of, of a three day weekend. Um, and it's been a busy weekend, so it's definitely going to be a deep sleep tonight. Okay. All right. So I want to go ahead and pull this up. This is the card, uh, and <laughs> <laughs> this is the queen of swords. I'm just laughing because uh, I just feel out of sorts. I was uh, getting ready to do my reading and the cat came and um, wanted me to hold her and cuddle her. And um, she just made me feel very sleepy as I was drinking some tea and trying to get myself sorted. Okay, so we have the queen of swords. Okay, this is... Uh, um, one of my, I always say, I feel like I say this about most of them. This is one of my favorite ones. Just because I really like the, the this throne is made of clouds. It's very much um, that sharp intellect, uh, a very resourceful, um, knowing queen, right? Uh, somebody who does not mince the words, but is also... Um, very skilled at mediating, counseling, and assisting people through uh, whatever problems they have going on. Um, and, and maybe one of my more favorite parts of this uh, archetype is just the complete authentic nature of their um, persona, of their outward persona. So... Um, Definitely somebody who maybe is a little intimidating, somebody that um, makes you feel like they know so much more about the world, about life, about just so many different things, but, um, but isn't really necessarily there to like kind of shove it in your face. It's just kind of um, the vibe that they have. So, um, I, when I think of somebody like in this archetype, I think of like a, a professor, a teacher, um, uh, you know, just a really worldly, um, a, a worldly person that, uh, just has the ability to take you kind of um, along on their journey of storytelling, but there are lessons in those stories. Okay. All right. So let's see what we have here. The first thing that I saw, uh, was this sailboat. Okay. And this one's interesting because not only does it have the sailboat, but there is a person that looks like they are getting ready to board the sailboat. And so this makes me, and as I'm saying this, there's another person up here. Uh, and it almost seems like they're off on land. So it seems like kind of a departure, um, maybe away from family, maybe away from a loved one, some kind of situation um, where you're going out into the world, um, exploring, maybe going to the store to get some milk. <laughs> no, um, usually the sailboat, uh, to me is kind of an indication of some kind of, 
um, exploration, navigating away from uh, what you would think of as like where your roots are, or where your home is, where you grew up. Um, some kind of movement outward from that fixed location. Okay, so, and it looks like there's somebody up on the on the beach there or harbor or whatever. And um, I feel like this is, you know, this makes it a little more difficult. If you have somebody who is kind of watching you board the boat and get on your way, then that means there's somebody who cares about you that you will be parting from. Okay, so I wonder... Uh, this is in the physical realm and in that emotional realm. So I think that this is somebody who is probably living. Um, and I feel like because we have the uh, Queen of Swords, it seems like maybe um, this could be like a mother, a grandmother, who maybe is an air sign. Um, I don't, I, maybe this is, a relationship like a spouse uh, but I kind of get the um, feeling that this is more of like somebody who uh, is like a caretaker was a caretaker for you um, somebody who um, somebody who helped b you build a very independent spirit to be able to even get on the boat and leave home. Um, that you, you know, that you are a resourceful person. You are somebody who um, has a lot of confidence. You are adaptable. Um, you are able to thrive in many situations. Um, and, and I think that you, this departure from um, your mother, grandmother, aunt, whatever, whoever this was, uh, I still feel like it's something, even after probably a lot of years, it's something that really was hard for you and you kind of think about that with a little, it's like bittersweet because it was almost like launching um, into life, but you were leaving kind of, you're leaving the nest, you know, you're leaving that, um, that spell of safety that we kind of have as younger people um, before we kind of have had, you know, a few brutal run-ins with reality of, of the world, you know. And, and so I think this is definitely was a, um, this was a big rite of passage for you. This is something uh, that you're both proud of and um, it's also just kind of, there's a little bit of sadness there. Uh, now I do think that probably this person um, is maybe still alive even, but you know, um, you might be older now and taking care of them or um, you don't get to see them as often. Maybe you work a lot or you live in a different part of the country, whatever it is. Um, you know, there's still a little bit of hurt, um, about that leaving. Okay. So, uh, give them a call, <laughs> go see them. Um, you know, it's, and, and if they have passed, which, you know, is possible as well. Um, this is, I always, I always say write a letter, do something special um, for them in honor of them. When we really go through these periods of time where they come up in our, in our thinking a lot and um, we're reminiscing and they're those real, you know, it can be real sharp pains of grief that arise even many years later. Um, I think that things like... And depending on uh, when, you know, what what the season is for you, but you should plant something for them, a tree, a, a bush, flower, something that you, um, something that you can visit. It's in your backyard, maybe. 
um, maybe in your window you can have a pot and um, something to look at and 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 just feel their um, kind of energy you know um, I think of course it's beautiful to go to a place where they've been laid to rest uh, but if you don't have the ability to get there often um, you know just having these kind of uh, natural memento kind of things I think that's always um, a wonderful tribute and you know then you get to fill your house or your back backyard up with beautiful things and and so um, if you think of them often you might end up with a whole garden full of flowers <laughs> okay so uh, now this next one let's see I want to look at this this way as well okay so and I always want to kind of be delicate here, here. So, um, now this is an interesting, interesting formation. Um, we have kind of a, a pretty phallic, uh, formation here. It also almost looks like an anchor to me. Okay. And then here, I think that there's kind of some double meanings going on. Um, here we have a house. Okay. But it also looks like, um, uh, how do I, like a yawny, I guess I could say, or, um, a feminine sex organ. I don't know what I'm allowed to say on YouTube really, to be honest, but, um, every time this comes up, which isn't a lot, <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna have to go look up and see what I'm allowed to say, um, without getting in trouble. But, uh, anyhow, so we have kind of the duality of, um, these two. Okay. And we also have the house and the anchor here. So I feel that you have found, um, your place in life where, uh, you, where you have really explored um, and th these are kind of Jungian terms, but your anima and or animus, depending on what you identify with um, as your prominent gender, which this all this stuff is kind of, it's a little outmoded just because we, the language has shifted so much. Our ideas of gender have shifted a lot. Um, but in this very kind of it's kind of very binary although it's not as well because there is young talked a lot about spectrum within um so-called dominant gender but within us there are many genders right all of the archetypes have genders plus they have what you would consider consort genders or um, the other side of their gen. So, and I'm going to keep, I'm going to stop saying gender <laughs> over and over, but so for me, I, sorry, my daughter was coughing, just listening there. So for me, I, um, pretty much mostly identify as a woman. Okay. So, and so in this school of thought, um, there would be within me my inanimous, so a masculine, um, a masculine counterpart or a masculine kind of consciousness. And so um, part of the overall kind of magnum opus of um, the inner work that we do, and this is and this is alchemical, this is esoteric, this is, you know, kind of Jungian mysticism or, or even within his, um, ideas within psychotherapy. Um, it is, we come to know these parts of ourselves. We unify with them and that would be considered something like the chemical marriage, um, uh, like divine coupling with self. And so we kind of, through this um, embrace, this integration of these different 
um, parts of feminine, masculine, um, and then exploring kind of the spectrum as well. Um, then, you know, we become a more whole and, um, you know, less specific, uh, I guess, I don't, you know, identifying person in a spiritual sense. Okay, so, or a psychological sense as well. I mean, it, you know, it manifests differently for every kind of practitioner. And um, so, anyways, this is a very complicated way of saying that you've kind of found within yourself, I believe, a real balance in your kind of experience in life. I feel that um, you have you're very you have an open mind to the varied experience of others even if you do not go through the same processes as others i think that you um are very open and empathetic to the experiences that um influence the world around you maybe not exactly directly but you are a listener you take things into yourself. Um, you kind of mull over them. They affect you emotionally. The energy is about you. You um, are a person who has worked deeply on uh, pushing the understandings uh, within your interior spaces. Okay. And I also think that um, in a more uh physical world sense that you found a place after leaving home your family of origin home um you found a place that feels like home and you went through some life between the two but i think that you kind of have found where you like to be and you have anchored yourself to some degree so that you can put down roots and i feel that you have also um, made wherever you are, uh, kind of your temple. And that is reflected inside and out. Okay. So I feel like just, uh, you're, you have a very settled nature and I wonder if you are not in, um, maybe, you know, somewhere in middle age or older, because it seems like you ha are somebody who maybe has begun the individuation process and really um, kind of, you know, they say that we spend, um, you know, our, the first half of our life experiencing things and, you know, going through things that are mostly out of our control because we're children for a lot of it. Um, but we take in a lot. We take in a lot of information and we take in it, we develop all of these different, um, you know, uh, n n like networks in our brains, our emotional um, uh, bridges and things uh, to experience and um, trauma and joys and you know all all of the different things that we go through so then in the second part of our lives we spend a lot of time trying to navigate the things that have happened um and we still live a life right and it's a full life probably a busy life but we also spend a lot of time trying to sort through a lot of these things that we've witnessed that we have, you know, taken part in or um, have happened um, around or to us. And so this is, this gets into that, uh, those beginning stages of um, that really, uh, the deeper, um, the deeper, deeper self work. And, um, and so I think that you, you're there, you're, you're getting, you know, kind of going deeper and deeper into parts of yourself. Um, and you are so apt to do that, I believe, because you have spent so much time trying to understand others, trying to um, 
you know, not just kind of adapt an environment to you, but to be a part of your environment in a very holistic way. Okay. And let's see. Let's kind of turn this one. We have a, um, a nice arrow here. Okay. And it also looks like we have a person that is running right here. And we're, I mean, some of this is starting to dry. The little smaller pieces often do. Mostly what I see here um, is just some real kind of bouts of anxiety, um, some emotional chaos happening. Um, but I also think of, uh, this is a time when you, when things are emerging from your self, your, your subconscious. Uh, and if we think of that as kind of being, um, an ocean, uh, this kind of dark, murky thing where uh, symbols and shapes and these collective myth myths and um, synchronicities and things um, start to emerge and then they manifest in our lives. And, um, you know, often they will continue to do so until we stop and kind of investigate them. Um, I feel like it's very potent time for that. Uh, but I think that is also coupled with some, um, and we have this, we have the queen of swords energy, uh, a lot of higher thinking, um, just the ability to, uh, execute any kind of, um, plans or, um, tasks that you have. But I also think that um, there's a lot of uh, kind of worrying, um, overthinking that can happen. Uh, a sense of being up late at night, unable to sleep, kind of going over the details of things. Um, a lot of the what, what ifs. Okay. Now I'm looking up here. And, uh, I am seeing these different, I see a person here that kind of looks like they're wearing a mask, um, a bat here. And this person looks like they're kind of kneeling in front of this stack or it almost looks like a fire. Okay. And they have some kind of, um, like a, a, a roof over the top of them. So I would imagine this is kind of within um, an interior space where there's uh, a hearth or some kind of fire pit or something. Um, now, uh, I think that all of these, at least these two, point to me that there is a need for some actual um, physical ritual to occur and it doesn't have to be anything too complicated this could be um merely taking a night off to go out and um dance or uh see some you know see a movie see a band um do something that will lift your spirits. And I'm thinking of music and dancing because these are very rhythmic things. And when you go to like a live music, um, event or, or to like a club or, um, a place that has a band playing or whatever, um, it's hard to not be fully immersed in that moment. Uh, the sound is very loud. Um, depending on what kind of music it is, it's probably somewhat rhythmic. The, the lighting is fit to be kind of, um, to inspire an atmosphere can be kind of almost enchanting. And, um, it really, you know, I don't know how often I've gone to a show or a concert and, uh, been thinking about, you know, paying my bills or whatever. <laughs> um, I might be thinking about it on the way home, but, um, 
you know, when I go into a place like that, it's you are entering something that is very much like a sub reality, right? So I think it's important that you find something that will help you uh, escape some of this thinking, at least for a moment. Now, when I say escape, um, I, you know, I'm not advocating anything, um, like I don't advocate any kind of, uh, chemical use or anything like that, or, or even just drinking or whatever. I'm not that I come down on that, but, um, that's not something I, you know, <laughs> I just want to make that clear, but, um, you know, doing something that is, can alter your perception doesn't have to be anything chemical. Um, it could definitely be the music. It could be going swimming. It could be, uh, exercising or intentional movement. It could be, um, you know, going to, um, be with people that you love you know, that changes, um, it ch going to see, well, here's an example, going to see like your grandchildren, right? Uh, especially if they're really, they're not old enough to be super sassy yet. <laughs> and, um, they just, you know, they're, they're beautiful and they're sweet and, you know, um, you just kind of, everything they say is just, you know, a glory, uh, that changes your state of mind. It changes, um, how you feel and what you're thinking about. So I think that, um, any of these kinds of things, think of something, um, that really, you know, will help you kind of just stop worrying about, some of the things that are coming about. Now, I think a lot of what's happening too is there's a lot of kind of just sinking back on things, periods of your life. Does this mean that something is coming up? Um, do you, are you going through a rite of passage right now? You know, um, I think that, uh, I think that, and I'm looking at this bat, I think that, uh, and this is, I really love the bat because it is just kind of, um, it's having a, uh, a glory day or it's glory day on the internet now. Um, I know that we collectively as humans kind of were put off by bats for a long time, I think, and probably rightfully so. Um, but because we can kind of look at how cute a lot of them are, I think that we're not so afraid of them anymore. So, um, they're kind of really adorable, most of them. Um, but I think that more than anything to me, um, the bat is really just a sign of, um, well, you know, just being very capable uh, and working with the mechanisms that they have to make their life work. Um, and that's, and I'm not gonna, I can't begin to explain how they're able to navigate, but I know <laughs> that it's very complicated and interesting. And so, um, I was going to say it's like sonar. I don't think that's what it is, but it's something they have some kind of little like built in radar that they can find their way around. Um, but I think beyond like being just capable and adaptable, uh, there's just a sense of being very authentic. And this is definitely, um, and a very heavily applied meaning, be, my own personal experience with them is just that, uh, it's something that, uh, again, like we, you know, people are just, uh, you know, kind of like rats or something, but, um, but the rebranding has been amazing and they just have, you know, they're authentic. They're, it's an authentic and cute and adorable thing. And, um, so I think for, in this symbol, I just think of something as very, um, and <laughs> I don't know, maybe some of you will disagree with me, but there, I mean, if you really do go look up like the, like bats eating, um, 
I think they're fruit bats when they're eating like bananas and stuff. They're so cute. But um, yeah, so I, I feel like, and this is also this, I'll tie this into this little metaphor here, uh, that it's really your superpower in life that you are a very authentic person, okay? I feel like in parts of your life, you have tried to conform to your environment. And I think that even in some ways in your youth, and this is part of maybe why you became so independent and kind of left your home base, um, you tried to kind of conform to your environment a bit. And I think that was more on like a social level, um, even maybe within family. But I think that you, as you have grown up and just done your own thing and found confidence in your ability to take care of yourself and accomplish things, you've just really become like a very authentic, um, take me as I am type of person. And this has been your key to success in life. I think that you really, um, have, uh, a very appealing personality and, um, talent, cleverness, all these things um, that have really worked out for you. And um, so, because of the bat, oh yes, because of Batman, right? Superpowers, so. Although Batman didn't have a superpower really. He just was like a guy that could afford a lot of stuff. So um, maybe that one didn't work. <laughs> but anyways, so um, let's see, we have this one, which is interesting. It's an L and then we have a V and an E and it makes me think of love. It looks like, uh, kind of the, um, what is that in Philadelphia? The love statue. And I think of it as the stamp because I've always seen it on the stamp. Um, but we have love here. So, I think that also with this little heart over here, love is an important thing. And I think with now I'm seeing with this arrow going this way, um, it feels like almost that you are and this person that was running. Um, it seems like you are going through these like this process. There's almost kind of a like a linear thinking process, like going over different thoughts, uh, like, how do I explain this? Almost like you tell yourself a story, uh, to, to kind of figure out something that's going on in your life, but you're going over from childhood up and all these different things that have happened, um, and that you have done in your life. And, um, it, it always comes back to the sense of finding love within the different, uh, events of your life, especially the larger events. And I think that maybe because you are getting into this period of, um, really becoming, um, like a, a, a wise person, a wise being, um, it's like, a lot of the hurts that we've had in life, right? As you are more accepting of people, you have more empathy. Just because you've lived some life, you've seen some things, you understand um, people are people. And usually people are just trying their best, right? It doesn't mean that they're doing great all, great all the time. But uh, most people do just try their best to get through things. Um, and... I feel that you are able to kind of apply this thinking to some of the more difficult things that have arisen. I also think that you really are connecting with that uh, mother, grandmother, um, person in your life, uh, thinking back on, you know, just how much they really did for you, even their shortcomings and all of that. Um, it's all excusable to some degree because they tried so hard. And, um, and I feel like, you know, of course, like for me there, I had a lot of anger with my mother. She died when I was young and, um, and I've cried about it on my 
readings before and I'm not going to do it tonight. But, um, you know, you just, you, I became a mother and I'm trying to actively go through um, things that I remember from my childhood that I never got resolved because my mother died. So um, as an adult, I just kind of put them in a, my pocket and carried them with me and, you know, talked about them in therapy and stuff. But like when you don't have the person to go through them with, it's very difficult to kind of um, find any kind of closure or at least just kind of accept things on a deep level. And, but as becoming a mother now, um, I feel like, you know, just, well, she, she feels much more present in my life. My mother does. Um, but, uh, also I just am able to try to, um, really realize that like, it's really hard to be a parent. It's hard. It's hard to have people, um, or it, you know, a child, um, look at you as being kind of the answer to everything and especially if you don't know what you're doing or you're su you know you're suffering and um not a very um you know not somebody who has had my mom my mom died when she was young pretty young so um hadn't had a lot of her own life experience so um you know, we go through these times in life where we really do look back a lot and hopefully are able to um, overcome some of the things or at least, you know, um, process them and integrate them into ourself because we have like more of a functional understanding um, of some of the, the, the pain. Um, you know, and, and the things that just went wrong. So anyways, um, let's see, let's look at this real quick. All right. So I feel like we have the illumination symbol here and then kind of have this like, sh it looks like a shoe or a boot. So I almost wonder if like you are going to be maybe traveling, um, home, maybe there's something going on. Maybe this is part of like what the reflection is. Maybe there is some reason for you have to, where you have to go back to your home, um, original home or back to the area. I kind of feel like you don't live there anymore, but I think that I almost wonder, and it kind of makes sense to me a little bit that, um, all of this stuff is kind of like you're, like you're going through a process of fortifying yourself, navigating some of these emotions. And, um, it's like really, some of them are just, it's just coming up. Um, you know, these thoughts just when, when we become, um, you know, when, when something is changing in our life or something that is painful or emotionally charged, a situation comes, comes up. It doesn't have to be related to anything from the past necessarily, but, um, these are like when we start having, you know, really like more difficult dreams sometimes, um, uh, invasive thoughts or, um, you know, just overwhelming kind of sensations, impressions that just come out of nowhere, things you haven't thought about for a long time. Um, and you can get lost in these like periods of kind of contemplating 
the things. Also, I think if you are going back to your home, maybe going to see this person, this, this mother, grandmother, air sign archetype person in your life, um, it could be that you're like readying yourself to be able, you know, to be back in that place. Even if you've been there a lot, um, there's always something about going, going where you grew up um, that it's just like, you look at like a tree and you're like, Oh yeah, that's where I fell off my bike and like broke my arm or whatever. You know, there's just things that come to mind that, um, uh, most other places don't hold those really strong, um, emotional kind of memories and things. Um, so, uh, you know, if that's the case, you just gotta, I think that you know what you're doing, okay? You know what you're doing and um, trusting in yourself and your intuition, um, doing some of those things to balance out the really heavy stuff with maybe going to places um, to blow off some steam or to dance or, you know, just kind of spin the afternoon swimming, getting some sun, napping, whatever it is, just to get out of this, you know, um, potent kind of emotional place that is happening, um, and try to limit the overthinking. Um, the other thing I was, that came to mind is, um, for me, sometimes doing like word puzzles and things, uh, is helpful when I'm like, obsessing over something like not just obsessing but you know like I'm I just get stuck in these thinking loops and um it's a lot of times like before I go to bed or whatever and it's like always I'm always worrying about stuff when I can't do anything about it um you know like oh, I have to remember to call this place tomorrow and then I'm thinking about all of the you know, what if I forget or, you know, whatever. And, but they're not open, so I can't make the call. <laughs> so it's just, it gets built up in my head. But anyways, so I want to thank you so much for spending this time with me, listening to me ramble a bit and maybe overshare here and there. But um, I do love connecting with you all. And um, I, you know, I hope that some of the sharing, um, kind of humanizes this experience, makes it feel more like a conversation, which is always kind of, um, my hope and my, my, um, ambition here and, uh, and my approach to these readings. So, um, so yeah. Okay. Well, if you would be so kind as to like the video, it's helping us get in the algorithm. Uh, we're growing as a channel. Each and every one of you, um, are a part of this community. Um, and so if you haven't subscribed, please think about doing so. You can hit the little, I'm trying to drink this quietly. I've <laughs> I don't want you to have to listen to me take a little drink of tea. Um, let's see, what was it? Oh, if you haven't subscribed, you can hit the little bell. It'll let you know when the next videos come out. And if you want to leave a comment, please do so. I read every single one of them, and I appreciate all of them. Even the, the silly and kind of mean ones. <laughs> <laughs> I don't always leave them on there, but I do usually have a little bit of a laugh about them. So I want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we will talk again really soon, Aries.